Welcome to today's episode of Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square. We're glad you've joined us. This show is presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square and streams every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org. You can find out more information about Piping Up, including downloadable programs for this week's episodes and all previous episodes at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Our featured performer today is Tabernacle organist Andrew Unsworth, playing the Schoenstein organ in the Conference Center on Temple Square. He opens the program with the energetic, virtuosic prelude in G major from BWV 541 by J.S. Bach. Bach's oldest son, Wilhelm Friedemann, played this work as an audition piece for an organ position in Dresden in 1733. Needless to say, he won the audition. With this music under his fingers, that was hardly surprising.
That was the Basse de Trompette by Jean-Adam Guillain. Despite the French-sounding name, Guillain was actually born in Germany as Johann Adam Wilhelm Freinsberg. He gallicized his name when he moved to Paris around 1700. The movement we just heard was from his Suite in the Second Mode, which, if you're interested, is the Hypodorian mode, transposed to G in this work. Two of Mendelssohn's six organ sonatas are based on Lutheran chorales, making explicit their connection with both the liturgy and the music of Bach. Today we'll hear the concluding Andante Tranquillo from the Sonata No. 3, a work based on Luther's chorale, Aus tiefer Not schrei ich zu dir. This chorale is Martin Luther's own paraphrase of Psalm 130, Out of the depths I cry unto thee. In this sonata, the chorale is treated in two different ways. The dramatic first movement begins with a Baroque-like prelude as an introduction, followed by an extensive fugue based on the chorale tune. It wears the Bach influence openly in its forms and practices and states the chorale melody very clearly in the pedals. By contrast, the Andante Tranquillo seems much more lyrical and modern, more Mendelssohn, and yet there are echoes and reminiscences of the chorale melody all throughout this finale as well. Now, this can be viewed as a potent metaphor on faith. The open, public displays that demonstrate our devotion are important. Just as Bach was Mendelssohn's model in music, Christ can be our model in all things, and we would do well to learn of him, follow him, and do the things he did. But that overt imitation of a great master is just part of the expression of our commitment. It needs to be integral to our inner soul, not just our outward acts. The two movements in Mendelssohn's third organ sonata show that the composer wasn't only mimicking Bach like a musical parrot, he had imbued the spirit of Bach's music into nearly everything he wrote. You could say he had Bach not only in his fingers, but in his heart as well. It's less overt, not quite as on display, but no less powerful and present. If we cultivate this inner faith, all our actions will then bear the unmistakable hallmarks of our commitment, just as this concluding movement of the organ sonata manifests the spirit of the chorale through its gentle lyricism.
This is Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square. These concerts are streamed every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon Mountain Time, right here where you're watching us now. Our organist, Andrew Unsworth, will now play his arrangement of the hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, a 19th century pioneer hymn that is a long-standing tradition in these noon organ concerts. Then we'll hear his arrangement of the old song, Annie Laurie. The lyrics of this 18th century Scottish tale about lost love were modernized and set to music in 1835 by Alicia Ann, Lady John Scott, who was devoted to maintaining and promoting traditional Scottish culture, history, and language. When she published the song, Lady Scott donated the proceeds to benefit the widows and orphans of soldiers killed in the Crimean War.
Sir Charles Villiers Stanford may not have been the flashiest composer in England at the beginning of the 20th century, but nobody doubted his technical skill nor his influence as a teacher. His students included Holst and Vaughan Williams. Although he's known today mainly for symphonies and choral works in the Anglican tradition, Stanford was also an organist and produced five organ sonatas along with numerous shorter organ works. Today's program concludes now with Andrew Unsworth playing Stanford's organ Fantasia from Opus 121, based on a hymn tune Stanford had composed himself for the Feast of All Saints.
We hope you've enjoyed today's presentation of Piping Up with Andrew Unsworth playing the Schoenstein organ in the Conference Centre on Temple Square. Thank you for being with us. For more inspiring organ music, join us again for Piping Up, streamed every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website and YouTube channel and on broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.